A very good afternoon to you, our cherished and descending listeners. It's another beautiful and blessed Wednesday, and we here at Multimedia are happy to bring you another exciting edition of your favorite business development program on radio, Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle Good Energy, Goyle Yenara Yedia. My name is Yabanafo, and I'm excited to bring you today's edition of Masterclass. Last week and the weeks before that, we spent time with Daniel Sapon and we're talking about the abundance mindset, dealing with stress, dealing with challenges, dealing with team coordination and being able to attract clients. Thank you so much, Daniel, if you're listening to us. Good afternoon to you from Masterclass and thank you so much for sharing those thoughts with us. I hope that you've been encouraged, you've been empowered, you've been inspired. You've been motivated. And as I thought about taking this on air, I, I said to myself, I hope that you've been motivated in the right direction. We are not saying go and punch above your weight, but we're saying that with the things that you're able to do, do them well and do them thinking positively. Because what you look for is what you will see. If you keep looking out for the problems in your business, that's what you're going to see. If you keep thinking the right things and you have the right energy, having done everything else, having put every plan in place, if you begin to feel positive about what you're doing, you will see the positive things and then you'll be able to take the positive decisions, ask the positive questions, and obviously you will get the positive results. So definitely, and we gave that example here in that conversation about the, about the situation where if somebody wants to buy a new vehicle, let's say you want to buy X vehicle, I'm not going to make an advert for anyone, but if you want to buy X vehicle, the weeks leading up to the purchase of that vehicle, do you realize that the only cars you see on the road are the vehicle that you you have decided to buy. You don't see any other car. And then you begin to ask questions. Oh, that's my car on the road. That's my car going there. And then you begin to ask, how many models of my car are there? Where do I get help with servicing? What's the fuel tank capacity? Um, what's the tire size? You begin to ask the right questions. So we're saying that spend time also around the right things, the positive things, and also around the right people. I remember Daniel said that, that spend time around the right people so that you are challenged to do the right thing. He wrote his book because at some point in his life, he, he realized he was surrounded by people, all of whom had written books. And he said to himself, I have a wealth of knowledge. Why can't I do something else that can also help and give back to people? You're welcome to today's conversation. Today, we're moving slightly into a different area of our show. Every now and again, what Masterclass likes to do is to be able to, after having discussed with you the theories of business management and entrepreneurship, go out into the field and bring here into the studio a few of our listeners and our entrepreneurs who are actually doing the real work out there. So when we talk about having an abundance mindset, going through the hardship on a very sunny day like today, how do you have an abundance mindset when it's the end of the month and salaries haven't been paid? How do you have an abundance mindset when the bank is calling you and you're defaulting on your repayments? How do you have an abundance mindset when your staff are misbehaving and you went through a recruitment agency, so therefore you expected that the right thing was done? How do you do the right things when the reality hits home? Today, we're here in the studio, and we've catalogued this conversation, the Startup Reality Dialogue. Startup Reality Dialogue. I'll be introducing my guest today for the show, an entrepreneur. He started a certain setup, or an SME, if you like, with a group of friends, and he's going to tell us a story. It's not just a story we're going to be listening to. The story he tells today represents the story of every entrepreneur who started an endeavor. When you finished from school, what did you decide to do? What decisions did you make? Did you stop along the line? Did you continue? What were the challenges? How did you surmount them? Have you stopped for a while? Have you, you know, decided you're not going to do this again? What, what are the realities? There are people who have gone ahead and done this. And today we're going to be hearing from one such person and he's going to be telling us his story. And then, of course, we'll ask all the questions about the theories of management, theories of um, business that we learn here in, on the show and see whether they translate into reality for um, his business as well. My guest for today's show is Mr. Lloyd Kusi, who is the CEO and co-founder of Penta Foods. Lloyd, you're welcome to today's conversation. Thank you very much for having me, sir. Um, I'm, I'm particularly excited because um, we're going to be hearing your story, which represents the story of every entrepreneur who's listening to us who um, is having difficulty. And the thing about sharing stories is that they serve to inspire. They serve to motivate. People can then look back and say, listen, so I'm not the only one who's going through this. Or I've gotten to this point in my business journey and I realize that it feels like I'm alone. It feels like the world is collapsing on me. But if they hear your story today, obviously you survived. That's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> then they are motivated to say, listen, someone has gone beyond this point. This is what they did. It may even be in a different industry, but the general business concepts really 
sometimes apply across the board. Yeah. The other thing is that you're doing this here in Ghana. And so the relevance to local context is also key. And so people are not going to sit here and say, oh, but he's talking about business in another economy, in another place. It's here. It's in the same economy right. where things are difficult. It's the same economy where, you know, I'm not going to go in and say anything else, but it's in the same economy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, so Lloyd, I mean, let's, let's not summarize it. Let's not rush it. You've got the entire show to do this. Okay. Let's go through the step-by-step step of how you even came up with the idea how you i mean when i saw your profile i summarized it and i put it up on facebook and i said from you are no students of st peter's is that yes, correct? exactly i'm an old okay so all the all the st peter's all the old boys, boys yeah. stand up <laughs> your boys in the studio today definitely, definitely. so i said to myself i said from the from the hills of Kwetia, pesco yeah. to the plains of accra someone had an idea and he set it up with a couple of friends and he didn't let the idea die it's become something that has grown into a beautiful tree today and still continues to grow. That alone for me is inspiring because if you've been able to do this this long, then surely we can also do it. Definitely. So let's start from, from the inspiration and then take us through the journey, if you will, up till today. And then let's begin to talk about some of the, of the realities about, about running a company like Penta Foods and uh, what you do and, and all of that. All right. Yes. Uh, thanks once again for having yeah. me here. You're it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I grew up listening to Joy FM, okay, getting ready for school. My grandma will have the radio on. I'll listen to the voice of the Lake yeah. Omla Dumor. And today to be here to share my story yeah. is such a privilege for me. So thanks once again for having me. We're happy to have you. Yes. Um, entrepreneurship is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Yeah. And when, when I was about to start, an old teacher of mine said, to start your own business, you must have a lion's heart. You must be courageous because you face a lot of challenges. And trust me, we did face a lot of, ch of challenges, having to deal with all sorts of issues. Like you said, we are in a very challenging part of the world. Things are not as smooth as they should be. And every day you are confronted with issues that you have to deal with. And it's how you deal with these issues that will determine how successful you'll be in the end. I would like to start this conversation by quoting Aristotle, who said, we are what we repeatedly do. So excellence is not an act, but a habit. So oh, please, please take your time and say that again. I think, <laughs> I think that hits home. Yes. He says, we are what we repeatedly do. So ex excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So once you have the habit of pursuing your goals and your dreams, striving for the best, you will definitely reach that point. Would you agree, and I'm, I'm tempted to ask this question, would you agree then that um, we could borrow that same phrase from Aristotle and say, success is not a sprint, it's a marathon, and therefore you are what you repeatedly do. If you do it long enough, yep. many times enough, yep. on one of those occasions, you're bound to succeed. And we shared the example of um, Abraham Lincoln the other day here on the show about how many times he tried to be president and failed and lost yeah. election. So I think it just hits home and connects that if you're listening to us, you have a business, you're setting up, you're going through any difficulty, we're encouraging you today, we're saying that it's not a sprint. Yes, you've done it for four years, it hasn't worked. It's, I remember you saying, you saying both said something the other day and it was so profound. He said he trained four years to run nine seconds. Exactly. Four <laughs> years he trained to run nine, nine seconds. And you know the thing about running the nine seconds? He, he ended the statement there, but I saw beyond it and I said, after he ran the nine seconds, it was in the moment of euphoria that he gloried. Yes. When that day ended, that nine seconds became a new target, even for him, Usain Bolt. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And then he had to beat his own target again. Yep. If he was going to beat that, he had to train even harder. So don't give up just yet. Don't give up just yet. It's difficult. It's tough. But take a step back, take a deep breath, and go back again and try again. I would, I'll just chip it with another quote yeah. here that says, if you're going through hell, keep going. You don't stop. Like we said, it's a marathon. If you stop running, you're not going to win. Mm. You have to get to the finish line. And so I'm just going to share my story about how we started the initial hiccups we had. Let me just quickly say this, that we're streaming live on Facebook also, and we've got a couple of slides that we're sharing for those of you who like to take notes, and for those of you who want to see what's going on in the studio, we're streaming live on Facebook. Please, if you are driving... Do not watch the live stream because we definitely want you to arrive alive. 
But otherwise, please go to Facebook, our Facebook page, my joy online, and definitely watch the stream as well. Yeah. Please go ahead. All right. So basically, uh, the story of my journey is, is basically a story of my life. It's how I have come to be where I am. And I can say that I'm not here because of just my own efforts. I'm here because of the support and love and patronage of all my customers, my family, my friends, and my close associates who have helped me to this point. Let me mention my uh, esteemed co-founder, Henry Osaya Jekum. I couldn't have done this without him. He's been a brother. He's been more than a brother to me. All right, so I'll acknowledge him here on this platform and say kudos, Henry, and thanks for your support. So um, I went to KNUSD. I studied biochemistry and bi biotechnology. And in our final year, we had um, this program, an entrepreneurship uh, program, where we are discussing a few uh, things we could do after school and how to approach it and stuff like that. And that is when I started thinking about it seriously. I've always been into investing and looking at opportunities to invest. I bought my first shares in item drugs when I was in SS1 or so. And so I've always been interested in business. I've always read books you know, on business management, and some of the stories of successful uh, entrepreneurs. And one book that really got to me was uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, okay? And the kind of legacy both parents left for their kids. And you look at, you, you, you listen to the, the, the story, you get the, the story from that uh, uh, book is, your parents, both parents were successful in their own endeavor, but then he benefited more from his friend's dad's ideas about business and it's some of the things that you know inspired me so I mean after one of those uh, sessions in class I ended, up, I ended up thinking to myself what can I do or what am I going to do after here am I going to go and pursue my master's degree am I going to go and get a job what do I do and then I'm like well I'm not married <laughs> I live in my father's house I have no responsibilities this is the time to risk it all all right and even a point where my dad was asked me if I really wanted to go ahead and do this. I was like, yeah, well, these are the reasons why I want to do it. And he was like, yeah, go ahead. And I really thank my parents for all their support. They've never been one to say it's not possible. They always give you the go ahead. And it's because of their efforts we are also here today. So, like I said, the Eureka moment came in class. And I thought, what products can I make from the training I have as a biochemist? that I can readily make, easily make, get the raw materials available and start selling. So the idea of yogurt came to mind because I've always loved yogurt. I grew up consuming copious amounts of yogurt because I grew up in uh, Ivory Coast for the first seven years of my life. And I kind of lost... Tu parles français? Un peu, un peu. So I... I loved yoga from, from the get-go, okay? And aside the fact that I loved it, it has numerous health benefits, okay? Of course, aside that... You know, let me just chip this in. Another thing I hear you say strongly, and I just want to draw this, this message home to my listeners, that starts with what you have. What's in your hand? What's in your hand? You know, there was a... Um, we had someone here on the show, Ikuya Santetofo. Ikuya, good afternoon to you if you're listening, of um, Webby Services on Facebook. Now, at some point, she knew how to make... Um, the local brew Bisap. Yep. It's one of the businesses she had. Mm -hmm. So she used to make it for uh, when, whenever they had guests at home and then she'd make it for parties and stuff like that. And at, at some point, somebody said, hey, yeah, but you can, you can do this commercially. Yeah. And she started and it became a business. Yeah. You're here talking to us about yoga because you are around it. Yeah. So what are you around a lot? What, normally, you don't need to reach very far to start something. If you're thinking of how to start a business, what do I do? What do I do? Normally, the answer is usually around you. So just, I'm just chipping this in here that be encouraged. Look around you. What is it that is close to you? What is it that you do easily? There's something that only you can do. Remember the guy on TikTok who doesn't say a word and that's <laughs> um, emotions and movements. Yeah. The guy is wealthy now. Yeah. There's something that only you can do. And that should be, um, should I say, a direction to what you can do when it comes to business as well. Please let's continue. Yeah, so the low-hanging fruits. Things that are low hanging yeah, fruits, readily yes. available to you. So... Um, I mean, I thought about yoga because of the health benefits, because I could easily make it. Well, I thought I could easily make it. That's what I thought initially. But then uh, theory and practice, you know, sometimes do not always go together. And I say this because I remember the first batch of yoga I made at home was an absolute disaster. You know, 
it did not go according to plan. I had to go and rummage through my boxes to look for my notes on fermentation, go through it again, and then try it again. And it still didn't work out. At that point, I'm like, seriously, is this where it's going to end? All right. So I was, you know, having a discussion with Henry. He's like, Charlie, let's go to Nima and see how these guys are doing it over there. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Nima, Mamobi, they have a lot of, you know, yogurt production, you know, in-house over there. And we picked a few pointers from there. We came back and we tried it. Few still didn't work out, but eventually we came up with a recipe that got everybody talking. Okay, my younger sisters at the time ended up licking the bowl and stuff. I'm like, we're not changing anything. This is it. Okay, mm. so those were the early stages of product development. So, how many times did you try before you finally got it right? I think about eight or nine times with different milk samples. Initially, because we suspected it was a milk, we tried different, you know, ba um, bacterial samples. But uh, eventually, we got a final mix that eventually worked well for yeah. us. Yes. Yes. Right. So um, that's how we started with uh, product development. Then, of course, uh, you have to find out if people actually like what you have done. It's not just your own palate that is, you know, used to, or you're trying to convince yourself that, hey, I, I mean, this is wonderful. All right. And then, of course, I, I needed money to buy raw materials constantly. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where my mom came in with her friends. She would buy my product because I didn't give it to her for free. She would buy my product <laughs> and give it to her friends to sample. But did you try again, because it's food production, did you try again a couple of times to be sure you arrived at the same, Absolutely. At the same place? Absolutely. I mean, scientific method, you, you, once you come up with the, the right formula, you have to keep trying to repeat the same process. Temperature, of course, this is yogurt, so then things like temperature, humidity, all these things will come into play. So, um, of course, we had a formula, we had written it down, locked it away, you know, the uh, the way the proverbial uh, secret formula mm -hmm. yeah so we we had that on books right and then we had to uh, we had to give it out for people to try okay mm -hmm. but at the time of course we had very limited resources and we had to make deal with the little we had i i personally started or my portion of the investment came from my national service money that i had saved okay and um, of course, after a while, when things started progressing, I liqu liquidated my shares in ITIN drugs. I fed that into the company. Um, I remember my parents giving me uh, equivalent of $2,000 at the time. Okay. And when things kicked off and we started moving around. So you didn't borrow from any, any financial institution? No, fortunately, at the time, no, we didn't. And I mean, you started? Yes. I don't but it's from family and friends? Yes, from family and friends, the three Fs. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't make anybody a fool. So, I mean, the, mm -hmm. let's say the two Fs, mm -hmm. <laughs> friends and family. And um, it was a challenge in the beginning. It reminds me of Uncle Ken Thompson. Uncle Ken Thompson, good afternoon to you. Um, he always says that when you start a business, there are only a few places you can get money. Yeah. Normally, start with your family, with your friends, with people who will lend to you, mm -hmm. or a financial institution. Yeah. But if you start with the people around you, if you mean to do something, start with the people around you. Because they're the ones who believe in you, yeah. and they know you, and it's because of your track record you have with them. The bank doesn't know me. I don't have no track record. Any fi no financial institution has any idea who I am. But then the people around you, the people you go around with, they are the ones who would have, uh, you know, inclination towards helping you and supporting you. So I remember when I started distributing, of course, I didn't have a car at the time. So anytime I saw a car available in the house, I'll pick it up. And then my dad said to me, pick one and use it. And I picked his favorite car. You know, because it was, it was one of his work cars, and it was the strongest car in the house at the time. And I said, this is the one I want. He said, okay, go ahead and have it. So you got support from family? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Also, I have to acknowledge um, uh, my friend, uh, my friend's dad, Mr. Osawa Jekum. He gave us a place to also produce after we left my mom's kitchen. So all the initial product uh, preparations and sampling happened in my mom's kitchen. And we, we ended up stealing her ingredients from time to time, <laughs> taking sugar and stuff. But then at the end of the day, we had to find a place where we could, you know, standardize the production, mm -hmm. make sure the place was sterile. Because, of course, we're dealing with food. And the last thing you want is for someone to have an adverse uh, reaction to your product. Okay, that's a non-starter from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So things about product safety, how you take care of your uh, environment, all those things are very critical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, of course... Um, you have to look for market aside the people you know. I did my national service at Lakeside Clinic. I was um, I worked in the labs over there. Okay, and I you know I grew up in that area, so I knew almost everybody there, and so that's where I first went to. So you leveraged on your network. Yes, absolutely. 
and that's another thing you know once you start a business that your your first set of customers should be your network and that's why it's absolutely important to develop your network i remember m sims mabel simpson was here in the studio again as an, under another same circumstance in this conversation mabel is just down the road mabel good afternoon to you if you're listening to us she's been on masterclass okay. she also started her own business okay and she started with uh, african print fabric and now she's making bags and clothes with african print fabric uh, that's, beautiful that's, stuff that's wonderful Very inspiring that's story wonderful. as well you know yes. so I'm excited when I see Ghanaian businesses doing things for themselves and setting up. And I think that even with the onset of COVID, we've seen a lot more ingenuity Absolutely. of people doing their own things and digging deep. And, and sometimes it's a the, is the necessity that brings about the creativity. Yeah. Uh, you know? I mean, you have to. Ghanaians are incredible people and we're hardworking. Mm. Okay? We are inspired by some of the leaders we've had in the mm. past. I mean, I, I look at Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the agenda he had for Ghana and mm. Africa, and you see that it's part of the Ghanaian fabric, mm -hmm. okay? So, um, Ghanaians will always find a way to make things work, mm. all right? Our challenge has been, of course, sometimes, especially in manufacturing, mm -hmm. most of our raw materials are sourced from outside, and it affects our uh, bottom line and our value proposition and all that. But when you say outside, you mean um, outside of Ghana? Outside of Africa. Most of them. Most of them. I, apart from, you know, a few that, are, you know, are processing agri-based uh, uh, products. I'll, I'll say even in my instance, about 90 to 95 percent of the inputs are imported. So we're exposed to a lot of external shocks and, you know, sometimes hiccups in the system. But, you know, I'm asking that question because you refer to... Um, a place in Accra where you went to learn some of the of, of the skills of the skills of the trade yeah. when you started. Yeah. They are producing here for the Ghanaian market. Yes. And therefore their raw materials are here. No. Oh, even their raw materials are not no. here. I mean we, we don't have any this is yoga we're talking about. We don't have any established dairy uh, system here. We have a few people who are trying now to start dairy farming and they are facing a lot of challenges. Okay. Mm -hmm. But really speaking our the cattle we have have not been developed to the point whereby they can yield the, the, the quantities of milk that we need for commercial production. You have um, instances in Eastern Africa, in Kenya, where, I mean, the average cow, you know, dairy cow can give you about 20 to 25 liters of milk a day. Mm -hmm. Here, you'll be lucky to have even three liters from a cow. Okay, and this is due to, you know, poor development, uh, genetic uh, development, poor feed management, poor uh, care housing, veterinary services. So these are some of the things that we need to start looking at. Mm -hmm. If we really want to put value in the system, okay, we need to have a situation whereby most of our, we are processing most of our raw materials. And I don't see why we cannot have an established dairy sector in this part of the world. Okay. How did you arrive at the name Penta Foods? Yes. So um, <laughs> we were five guys initially. Okay. So like I said, I had the idea in school. I spoke to one of my friends. He also liked the idea. After school, we used to meet uh, at home for a couple of uh, sessions. And then, out of the blue, I called Henry. Because I remember I attended a seminar with him some time ago. I wanted to find out what he was up to and stuff. And I told him about my idea. He's like, you know what, Lloyd, you'd be surprised. This is the exact same thing I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. And I'm on board with another friend of mine and then uh, another guy he wants to bring on board. So let's meet. So we, our first meeting happened at his mom's uh, restaurant. Okay. And, uh, I mean, she was a wonderful woman. I mean, it's, it's sad that we lost her a bit early. She, she never got to see what we are today. Mm. But she would, you know, give us free <laughs> lunch and stuff like that. Encourage the young men. <laughs> Encourage the young men, you know. And so we used to meet. And then the first thing we went about doing was drafting a partnership agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because, of course, mo a group of more than five people coming together, you need to have a document that they can fall on in case... There is any situation to yeah. be resolved. Yeah. Um, I remember people saying that, why do you want to go into business with you know, other people? You know, people, I'm like, hey, at the end of the day, this is a legal document we can fall on. If there's any misunderstanding, this is what we're going to use to resolve our differences. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you have that in, in place. Then, of course, this was pre-national service. So uh, the idea was that we're going to register the company, post ourselves there, and use that one year to risk it, okay? Unfortunately, the documentation delayed and we had to find our, you know, our own ways, okay? But the plan and the ambition was still there. Um, of course, we had a you know, preliminary budget in place. But just before 
we actually uh, finished national service. One of the guys had the opportunity to go and do his master's outside. Uh, another gentleman uh, uh, fell off the grid. I mean, he didn't want to uh, take part in it anymore. So we're down to three, basically. Um, but you kept the name Pentafood. Yes, we, well, that's what we started with. I mean, we were five initially. That's where the yeah. dream started from. So we kept the name Penta Foods. And uh, we've, we've, we've had that ever since. Uh, our product, okay, is called Gogot. It's, it's a probiotic, creamy probiotic yogurt. I mean, it's one of the best in town. Is it yogurt or Gogot? The brand name is Gogot, but it's, the product is, a, is yogurt. So how did you arrive at the brand name for the product? So how, well, we had a couple of, uh, you know, few, initially we went through several stages. I mean, I remember the other day I was going through my, my files and I saw some of the old labels we had, you know, played around with. From Yogo Splash to <laughs> Boot God, we, we, we picked up some German words, we put them together. But then eventually we're like, hey, this is for something peop you know, people can just grab on the go. You know, it gives them energy, gives them, you know, it, it fills them up. They, they can go through their day. They have the right amount of protein and stuff inside. So, hey, why not Go God? And so, so hey, Go God as in on the go. On the go. So, grab it and so go. Like you got on the go. <laughs> on the go. Grab it and go, you know. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's impressive. Yes. So I mean, it's, it's also genuine as well. I mean, it's, it's original. Yeah. We, we, um, we're also lucky to have, like I keep saying, we, we've, we've benefited from all those around us. So I, I looked at the initial designs we had, and they were horrible. Honestly, f at a point, it looked like some uh, medicine label or something, right? Uh, fortunately, we but had... That's because you're looking at it today. Back in the day, it, it looked like it was the best. Well, it looked like it was the best till we had an option, all right? We had... I was, I was just going... Uh, alluding to that. Um, a cousin of mine came down from France, and she was a gra she's a graphic designer, and she's like, this, this won't fly. Let me do something for you, all right? And I can tell you that we're still using elements of her design today. We have changed a few things because of certain regulatory uh, requirements, okay? But... Essentially, the design she gave us is what we're using. So today. The learning point there is just take the step. Just take the step. It may not be the best, but as you go along, it gives you something to work on yeah. and to change. And when you go back later and you look at it, you'll see that it was worth a try because you Absolutely. are where you are today because you started from somewhere. Yes. Talk to me about recruitment very briefly before we, um, we go on the break. I'd, I'd like for my listeners to also um, probably call in and share their own stories or corroborate okay. things you shared with us. Or uh, ask questions, if you will. Good. But uh, recruitment. How have you built your team over the years? And what, um, what's the size of your team today and the size of your operation, if you like? Okay, cool. Um, so initially, the initial production and everything, I, I used to handle everything, okay? I you were a one-man... A one-man um, show. Show. Yeah, and uh, I like using this uh, phrase. I think it's somehow uh, bastardized, but then they say, well, a jack of all trades. But mm. then they only leave it there. It says, the full text is, a jack of all trades... But a master of none, but still better than a master of what one, all right. Mm. So it's good to have knowledge in different areas. I train as a biochemist, but then in the course of my development, I have picked up things in finance. I've picked up things in accounting and marketing, you know. So you just have to keep evolving and be a sponge. Pick up as and when you can. Listen on in like shows like this. I mean, it's these are a few things you can always leverage on and then build up your knowledge base. So um, I relied on picking up guys within the, the community. I mean, young men who looked hardworking, who approached me and said, oh, what are you doing here? Well, I, I was like, I'm making yoga. Like, oh, can we help? So the first two guys I had on board were actually helping me for free. Mm. Okay. But I would, at the end of the day, give them. You would, you would, yeah, you would reach out to them. Exactly. And that's how it started. And I trained them in the, in the, product, uh, in the process from uh, proper uh, sanitary uh, practices, mm -hmm. you know, disinfection, cleaning, then of course the initial processing, how to inoculate the bacteria and stuff like that. Then of course, eventually I trained one of them so well that he could handle everything without my input. How many, how many staff do you have today? Currently, uh, direct staff, we have about 12 people, okay? okay? Um, before I into distribution, that is, they run, you know, with our trucks. Uh, we have a production team of five, and then we have a team of cleaners as well. Okay. But then our main, uh, we also have a system of agents and vendors who distribute on our behalf. I also look at stakeholders. Yes. Before that, how old is Penta Foods? Well, technically speaking, we registered Penta Foods in 2009. That was right after university, mm -hmm. but we didn't start operation until uh, mid-2012. 
Mm. So I, it's, it's it's it depends on when you want to start counting okay. from. So I, we have a football age and an actual age. <laughs> an actual age. Okay, but, but we can safely say you are more than ten years old. Yes, averagely, yes, we are more than ten years old. More than ten years yes. old. Interesting. Okay, uh, I have a few more questions for you, but I want us to get interactive. So we'll take a quick message from our sponsors. When we come back, we open the phone lines. <laughs> Your favorite on-air business development program, Joy Business Masterclass, is in session. And you can interact with us on Facebook via the Joy 99.7 FM or Joy Business pages. If you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM or at Joy Business GH. Don't forget to hashtag JB Masterclass. You can also call us on 0302 or send your questions and contributions through to the WhatsApp number 551 111997 and our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Welcome back. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. We're here in the studio and we're, we're having a conversation on the dialogue series where we go into the market we meet entrepreneurs who are actually going on in their business every day to listen to their challenges if you have any motor vehicle of any kind god has some great news for you and god is rewarding all of his prepaying go customers with up to two percent later discount on all fuel patches so join the go club today or go to the Goyle website at registration.goyle.com.gh Goyle, they say good energy Goyle, you're not yeah, yeah. Phone lines are now open. Numbers to call 0302216541. That's 0302216541. You can also send us your comments on 0551111997. Lloyd Kusi is here with us in the studio and he's telling us the story of Penta Foods and how they set up over 10 years ago. And we're listening to his story because we want to hear the real life stories of entrepreneurs and what they go through on a daily basis. Once we share the theories here in the studio, we also want to go out and listen to the real stories of people and what they go through every day. You were telling us about the setup and the number of staff you, you had while we're waiting for the phone lines to ring. Let's just also sort of um, share some thoughts on <coughs> what have been your major challenges, if you like, in setting up um, Penta Foods and okay. your experience over the last 10 years okay. that you've, you've, you've existed. All right. Uh, well, the challenges, like I said, they come daily, all right? Uh, I mean, initially for uh, for us, okay, getting adequate capital to set up properly, okay. Then, of course, like I said, I initially had to recruit from within the local community, and we did not have any proper vetting system in place, mm. okay. So along the line, when things started going well, we had an issue with some of the staff collaborating with uh, 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 vendors and agents and trying to imitate our products, okay. I mean, this was competition. competition. Well, but I mean, the way they went about it was, was quite uh, inappropriate. Okay. So one of the things I would say is vet your people properly. Unfortunately, for some of the things that we went through, we had to go through it because we didn't know about such things or we did not think. Hold that thought for me. I've got a caller on the line. This is not just any caller, but this is one of your stakeholders. I see. Because you're telling us your story here, but we also want to hear from some of the people that you've dealt with. This is, I've got Vidal Sean Digby. Uh, who is the CEO of Caliber Enterprise, and Vidal is one of your stakeholders. Yes. They apparently are the company that helps you to print the labels for your product. Absolutely. So we're going to have a quick conversation with Vidal. Good afternoon, Vidal. You're welcome to Masterclass. Yes, good afternoon. Um, yes, so Lloyd is a friend, and uh, he runs Pentafood, and um, they produce one of the best yogurts in town, okay? I believe he's, he's about to go international because when you taste this yogurt, your tongue tells you what you're tasting. It's good. Okay, so we do his labels for him. We've been with him for, I think, close to like four years. And he's, he's you know, he's come a long way. Without, I want uh, you to tell me just very briefly, in mm -hmm. terms of um, business ethic for SMEs like Penta Foods, not just with Lloyd, but okay. you, you've been in the business for a while. You are also an SME yourself. What yes. one thing will you share with people who are listening today from the perspective of a stakeholder when you deal with people? Talk to us about business ethics very briefly, not just about Lloyd, but about anyone else who you do business with from the perspective of a stakeholder. Okay, what I have to say is that uh, people have to persevere and they have to be honest. 
Mm. Okay, people like Lloyd, for example, when they you work for them and he tells you, I'll pay you tomorrow, he pays you tomorrow. And that helps people like us to also survive. Okay, right. And then they have to make sure their product is at the optimum. Mm. Okay. Without thank you so much. That's all time will allow us. But I wanted to hear from someone else regarding the business ethic, you know, because sometimes the thing about dealing with people in business, and we hear this a lot here on the show about honesty and integrity, honesty Absolutely. and integrity. Without, without has spoken, what's, what's been your experience dealing with your stakeholders where honesty and integrity um Absolutely. Coming. Social capital is very key. I mean, we have instances where there is no money in the system, but you can leverage on the trust people have in you. And like he says, you pay when you say you're going to pay. And if you can't make the payment, let them know that I'll make the payment on a different date. Okay? And that builds trust. So that is an automatic source of credit for you. We have had situations where we've dealt with vendors who have not been honest. And today, they're not making any money from us because they, they, we stopped dealing with them. Okay. So the learning there is to be is to be honest. To be honest. And to have integrity. To be honest. Tell us about your products. Yes. Very briefly. So um, Gogurt, like I said, is a creamy probiotic yogurt. Okay. It's made from cow milk. And of course, it's, we have three main flavors currently. We have the strawberry, vanilla, and then the natural yogurt. The natural is unflavored and unsweetened. And we also have a sweetened version as well. It can be used, it can be consumed at, uh, on the go. It can be used as a snack, and you can use it for your other preparations, for baking. You can use it as a replacement for cheese. I use it for cheesecakes myself. Uh, you can use it for parfaits, for your, I mean, those who are on a, health, uh, on a healthy uh, diet, okay? I've got a caller on the line. Uh, let me take that quickly, and I'll come sure. back to you. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where you're calling from. Good afternoon. Now, my name is... I'm thinking... Sorry, uh, I can hear you, but not too clearly. If you could just lower the volume on your set, and then let's try again. Okay, this is Equia from Accra. Is that correct? Equia, I, I'm struggling to hear you. Hello? If you could just yes, Equia. This is Love. Okay, uh, Love, go ahead. Uh huh. Uh, we are very two for program like this. Uh, we also send something small in our corner, but we don't know how to send them out. Is it like we can be giving the help to them who can demonstrate what we have? Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, thank you so much for calling. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, we'll, because he's given us his real life experience, the best way to learn is from someone who's actually done it. So Lloyd is going to put his contact out and he'll be happy to share his experience with you after the show. When people want to reach out to you, where do they find you on social media? Where are your offices? Where are your shops? Okay. How do people find you? So that love can reach out to you and also learn from your experience. Super. Uh, I mean, I'm always available to share my experience and also to talk more about my product. Uh, my contact numbers are 0249 961301. Let's repeat that slowly for the benefit of my listeners. 0249 Okay, hold that thought for me. I'll come back to you on social media. I've got Ben on the line. Good afternoon, Ben. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name and where uh, you're Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Well, um, Lloyd was talking about honesty and whereby he had to stop um, supplying some vendors who were dishonest with them. But I'm saying that um, even when the customers go to that particular shop to get a product, they are stopped supplying. Mm. Don't get it. So in the, in the long run, he's losing. So I'm saying maybe he can come up with something that can um, build a relationship with them. Like, I don't know, if it's a system that will help them. Because at the end of the day, he's trying to serve their customers. Mm. So when they go to the particular shop and they don't get a product to buy because they stop supplying him, the, the, the customer will not get a product and then maybe move to another product. Right. That's what I have to say. Right. Thank you so much, Ben. That's a brilliant contribution. Uh, thank you, Ben. And yes, uh, I understand where you're coming from. We've also explored other channels of getting our products directly to the customers. So we partner with Digistore Africa. We have an online platform where you can order the products directly. It will be delivered to you at a fee. Uh, the link will be shared to you, okay? But then it is digistoreafrica.com 
forward slash pentafoods gh okay we'll share that here after the show and I, I i forgot to mention this the first five callers on the show today are getting free gogot on the show so once you're done speaking to me you'll speak to the production crew on the back end and i will make sure that we reach out to you and you can pick up your free pack of gogot Ikria is back on my line Ikria, you're back yeah you're welcome back to the show yes please thank you very much by the way i you, am you calling for yourself you a free in the today. sorry please you've won for yourself a free gogot Oh, thank you. I can't wait to have a taste. <laughs> okay, the team will reach out to you. Talk to me. Yeah. So, I am quite new in the food industry. Right. Um, our gentleman shared something that is very important mm -hmm. as to how he sorts out the materials. Right. And most of them are coming from outside. Um, what I have noticed or observed is that even to have a good packaging or for a packaging to stand you need to source it out from outside. Mm. And when you do that, it makes your cost of production to shoot up. Right. And if you're not careful, and people tend to compare your product to the existing ones in the market, uh, you might want to go down and drop your packaging and keep to these low-card ones. Mm. But if you have a focus and you have a brand or you have something at the back of your mind, I believe you need to stick to exactly how you want your product to look and then you would be able to capture the market with a unique brand and a unique taste as well. I am new in the market, but those who have tasted what I do mm. would testify to the fact that my surface chip um, um, pepperoncino sauce is unique. Great. Thank you so much, Ikea. Um, I think I've got Sam on the line. Good afternoon, Sam. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name, where you're calling from? Good afternoon, man. You're my third caller, and you've won some go-god for yourself today. Thank you very much. Talk to me, Sam. Yeah, I'm also calling from Kutubabi. And I... Oh, dear. Sam, you still win that go-god, uh, nevertheless. Um, I've got a few more minutes, maybe, to slip in one more call. 030 521 so we're talking about where to find you. But I wanted to, there are a couple of questions I wanted to ask you. <laughs> a lot of questions, actually. In your 10 years of development, now you're a bigger company. Now you're looking to expand. What's your, what's your strategy? Um, well, basically, of course, it's, it's to be able to produce the best quality of products at an affordable price. Okay, And to do that, we need to expand and increase our economies of scale. Uh, like I said, currently we import most of our inputs, but we are looking at the possibility okay, of local substitution. I've got Dennis on my line. Good afternoon, Dennis. You're welcome to Masterclass. Your name, where you're Hello. calling from? Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dennis. Talk to me. Yeah. Okay. So, quick one. In as much as we are selling and we are making profit, I think most of the time we should be ready for feedbacks, right? Negative and positive. Because once you have stuff on the market. There will definitely be feedback. Definitely. I mean, if you are doing something and it's very good, you should be ready for positive feedback. Mm. And if there are some minor, minor things that you need to get information out about and improve upon it, I think I think it, it, it's good. So if they could also create a suggestion box where, whereby people will be able to give feedback, mm. I think it will also help them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Just a quick, before you react, Love, um, my team tells me you should give us a call back after the show so we can take your contact and make sure that you receive your parcel let's react to the comment that dennis has made and in doing that if we can sort of round up our conversation today and reiterate where you can be found both on social media and otherwise okay yes. well uh feedback is always key because that's what you know exactly what you're doing and i'm always delighted when i have positive feedback but i'm more interested in negative feedback because those are the ones that keep you on your toes. I have I have a loyal group of uh, customers who I've been dealing with for the past 10 years, okay, and whenever they call me and say, Lloyd, we had an experience today, I'm keen to find out what the issue or the challenge is and then we'll look at quick ways of resolving those challenges. So feedback is always important and for those who patronize our products, our, our contact numbers are on the, the packaging as well, so if you have any feedback whatsoever, please feel free to reach us. What My number again, packaging do you have? You have some for school kids? You have the one liter, and then which other one? Again? Yeah, so we have, currently, we have three different sizes. We have the two liter gallon, which is more or less like a family size. We have the 330 ml bottle, PAT bottle, and then we have a new pouch, 
okay, which is more convenient and more handy, and it appeals to children and adults alike as well. So it's, it's where, very unique. Where can we find you after today? Good. So, uh, like I said, my number is 0249-961301. We're also on Facebook at Penta Foods GH Limited. Okay. Our email is info at pentafoodsgh.com. I'm available anytime, night or day, to have a conversation about my product. I mean, I've had calls from people at sometimes at 1 a.m. I mean, it's this thing. And, you know, with some of the challenges I mentioned, I mean, there were times when I had to leave the house and go to the factory at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. to just make sure that things were going according to plan. I'm sure we'll have you back here to share a lot more of your story. With I, us. I will be glad to be Thank back. Thank you so, so much for taking Thank the time you. out to be with us today. Love, if you could just give us a call back again so we can take your contact and make sure that you get your prize. This has been Masterclass here on your Superstation Joy 99.7. Exciting real-life story. Startup dialogue series here. We go into the market. We hear the real-life story so that we can tweak our, our delivery to you and also be able to understand and appreciate what really goes on in the market. Next week, God willing, we come your way again with another edition of Masterclass and hopefully we'll have another other person here in the studio to tell us their own story of entrepreneurship and business. Thank you for listening and watching us. We'll see you same time next.